Imagine trekking through the Himalayas, over 4,000 metres above sea level, gasping for breath in the thin air while you search for an animal that few people have ever seen and that hardly anyone knows anything about. Well, today on RZSS Goes Wild, we're going to meet an incredible conservation researcher who's doing exactly that in order to help us better protect and understand an amazing but elusive carnivore, the Himalayan wolf. At the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland, we're lucky enough to work with some very talented researchers, and this is one of them. Dr Geraldine Bahan runs the Himalayan Wolf Project, and she came to us as a PhD student with an exciting research idea to work across three different sites in Nepal and help improve our understanding of this elusive carnivore. I'll let my boss, Dr Helen Sen, explain some of the background to this project. One of the things I really love about my job is working with students and researchers all around the world. I've been working with Geraldine for over five years now and I really look forward to her latest update from the field. Together with the Wild Genes Lab and our partners in Nepal, we've been working on some really technical questions involving genetics to try and understand more about the elusive Himalayan wolf. But if no one really knows anything about Himalayan wolves, how did Geraldine, who's originally from Switzerland, find out about them in the first place? I went on a trek in Nepal just as a tourist a few years back and I realized I got curious about the wolves. I asked the local people, where are the wolves? And they said, well, we used to have wolves here in the past, but now they're gone. You have to go higher up. I went back home and got into researching online everything I could find about wolves in these Asian high altitudes. And I realized almost nothing is known, but there were some studies indicating that these wolves might be different. So I was completely hooked and my interest was there to just reveal the secrets that these wolves had in store. One of the problems with studying an animal like Himalayan wolves is that they are really shy and hard to monitor. Wolves around the globe are very elusive, they're shy and they're wary of humans. They have good reasons to be so. They have been persecuted by humans for many centuries. So it is part of the wolf's survival strategy to just stay away from us. A wolf researcher like me, we don't get into contact with them as much, but in, we really get good at reading their signs and tracks. One of the signs wolves leave behind is scat or poo. And if you've seen our episode of RZSS Goes Wild on tiger poo, you'll know that the DNA in poo can help us answer lots of different questions about the animal that left it behind. But even getting hold of poo samples from Himalayan wolves involves some pretty gnarly fieldwork in challenging high altitude Himalayan mountain terrain. So for our fieldwork, we need to reach these really remote places and we have to track into them bringing all our gear. So we have to bring all our food, every battery that we need, everything. Whatever we forget, we simply don't have. It usually takes about a week to walk just to reach the study areas. And of course, really important to get our gear into the field and with us. Actually, the most important team members, I would say, are the mules because they carry all our supplies and it's quite a bit for a two month expedition. So they carry in rice with us and as we eat the rice or we collect wolf scat samples, they carry bag and bags of wolf scat over many mountain passes until we bring them back to the lab in Kathmandu and then together with them wild genes, we analyze these samples. So how does our ZSS fit in here? Well, we're able to help develop tools and analyses techniques for projects like this because of our on-site genetics lab, our team of wild genes experts, and the fact that we own two zoos, one of which, Highland Wildlife Park in the Cairngorms, happens to have its own wolf pack. With the Himalayan Wolves Project, we've developed a set of genetic methods for looking at the damaged DNA that we've found in samples high up in the harsh conditions of the Himalayas. We tested these methods using our very own wolves at the Highland Wildlife Park and then we were able to take them out to partner labs in China and Nepal to analyse Himalayan wolf samples from all across the Himalayan plateau. Using poo samples from Himalayan wolves, Geraldine and the team have been able to answer numerous questions about these animals, including what they eat, how many there are at various sites, where they are, and how they fit into the wolf family tree. Understanding how Himalayan wolves fit in with other wolves 
will help us understand how endangered they are. There's a fair amount of debate about the wolf family tree, but in this study, Geraldine and the team compared data from DNA from Himalayan wolf poo with DNA from African wolves and grey wolves and found that Himalayan wolves didn't fit into either of those groups of wolves and actually stand out on their own in a separate group. The methods we used looked at lots of different genes, but particularly those that might allow an animal to survive in the low oxygen concentrations found in the high mountains. The Himalayan wolf differs remarkably at all these genes from other wolves found across Eurasia and into North America. Thanks to Geraldine's work, we now know a lot more about Himalayan wolves. We know they eat a lot of blue sheep and supplement their diet with marmots, woolly hares and pika. We also know they like to eat Tibetan gazelles if they can find them and that they prefer wild prey to livestock. We also know they tend to live in family packs consisting of on average two parents and three pups and that they tend to live between 4,200 and 4,900 metres above sea level in rolling alpine shrubland and always close to water. We now understand what the wolves need in terms of prey species and we also understand a little bit about the conflicts that humans have with them and why they kill them. So now we want to test some actions to help people and wolves coexist in a more sustainable long-term manner. Also, we want to provide a lot of education to these communities living in these remote places. So you can see there's still a lot of work to be done and me and my team, we're super excited to keep working for the protection of these wolves and their habitats. Geraldine's work with Himalayan wolves is an example of how RZSS contributes to important conservation research in the wild. As with all of our conservation work, a portion of the funding for this comes from visitor admission fees to both of our zoos. And with those zoos both closed at the moment, that funding is unfortunately not coming in. But you can still help save the species in the wild that you love by clicking on the link you can see here or above or below the video and donating whatever you can to our conservation work. In the next episode of Our ZSS Goes Wild, we're staying firmly in the mountains to track down the original grumpy cat, Palace's cat. I will see you then. <laughs>